everyone, it's Neil here from 3D Tudor, and I'm back today with another complete guide. And this time, it's a stylized map room. And as you can see, it's fairly simple, but highly effective in its design, with a fair amount of the work being done actually through lighting, volumetrics, and of course, the Blender Compositor. So stay till near the end to find out how we really brought this map room to life. I'm also asking all of my subs if they'd very kindly head over to the link where it says Sketchfab and please give me a follow over there. And I will show you why I would really like you to do that. And it's not only so we can grow over um, on Sketchfab with our store, but it's also there as a recommendation because not only will you find all of our models where you can actually go around them, see how they're built, see how the textures are put, you can look at all the uh, meshes for instance and everything like that, but also because we've put a lot of free stuff over there and there is a lot of free stuff on Sketchfab from material packs and things like that to even free models. But the main point why I'm asking you to go over there is because this has become my main to like go-to place for my referencing. I still use things like Pinterest, ArtStation, and Google, but Sketchfab combined with PureRev, which I have a video on my channel actually, it's basically a piece of free software where you can actually put on all of your references. All you need to do is Control C, Control V, press and hold the C button, cut round your actual reference, and then you've got a beautiful reference sat there. As I say, Sketchfab and PureRev is the most powerful combination of tools for references I can find out there and you can see how easy it is to get an amazing amazing reference pack for you know whatever you're trying to build now just a quick word from our sponsor yep 3d tutor that's us because we're not big enough to get some big sponsor to come along and support our work but we do have something better than that and that is our patreon where you'll find every guide we have ever done complete with all the blend files materials and textures now this is pretty standard across most Patreons, you may see out there. But here at 3D Tutor, we wanna do something a little bit different. In other words, we wanna give you a whole lot more. This is because the more Patreons we get, the more free stuff we can keep creating. In fact, if we get to around 150 Patreons, we can hire another pro blender or Unreal Expert to pump out even more quality content. And of course, free stuff on top of that. So what do we give here at 3D Tutor via our Patreon? Well, over 350 hours of complete courses. Every month, you'll get to choose a course and it will be delivered right to your email. And best of all, you can pick which course you would like out of our vast library of over 23 courses. And the courses aren't just on Blender. We have courses on Unreal Engine, Photoshop, ZBrush, and for sure you're going to find some Substance Paint courses in there as well. So please check us out over on our Patreon, links are down below. Now that's all of the fluff out of the way, so what you're here for is our stylized map room. Links down below if you want to download it. So let's get started on our stylized map room. Cheers everyone. Welcome everyone to the modeling section. So the first thing I would do is bring in a plane. And what I'm going to do is use the simple knife tool to cut out the actual shape of the actual map that I'm going to produce. And actually, I just got some references, looked at a map, looked at some interesting points, some islands, things like that, and then basically produced the map. Now what I'm doing is I'm using a displace modifier. I'm gonna bring in the clouds, and then what I'm gonna do is change the size, the depth, things like that. And then finally, I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna change that bright brightness and contrast. And what that allows it to do is, it allows it to raise the land up and down, and then finally, you can mess around with the color ramp and bring up those mountains as well. So I knew actually I was going to take this into ZBrush or something like that and actually sculpt the rest of those flat planes and things. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to decimate it down just so it's a usable piece of mesh rather than it being all over the place because of the uh, displacement that I used. And now basically I'm going to just pull it out just to extend it a little bit because obviously we want it a 3D space and we want it to sit on a kind of plinth or something like that. All right, so now I'm in actual um, ZBrush. And what I'm going to do, first of all, is use the Dynamesh on it just to make sure that topology is really nice. And then trim curve, cut the bottom of it away just to make sure that it's all actually level. Next of all, I'm going to bring in a noise. So I'm going to change the noise to erosion. I'm going to turn it up a little bit, just alter it a little bit, just to make sure that we've got some bumps in the actual mountains and landscape. And while I've actually got that on, the best thing is you can actually sculpt away while that actual noise uh, texture is actually on. So that's really, really nice. 
Now the thing is, a lot of the times you'll see these mountings because I used a displacement. It doesn't allow for the edges or anything like that. So you have to go in and actually sculpt those yourself. You know, bring the mountings as though there would be cliffs just like in real life. So actually you're adding a lot of realism um, to this actual um, map. Next of all, I'm making sure that those uh, actual islands, they're not just like little peaks everywhere. I'm actually making sure that they look uh, fairly realistic. It is heavily stylized, this uh, this map and this scene in general, but still we need to keep some realism when we're looking at land masses and things like that. As you can see there, that little island there, it looks uh, just like a block from uh, Minecraft or something like that. And although I like Minecraft, we're not actually going for that look on this occasion. So now I'm also trying to put in some uh, rivers and things uh, for Luke when he actually comes to texture it, he can add those in as well. So you can see there's some little rivers. But I did give him a lot of free reign basically to create whatever he wanted to. And you can see because I did that actually it came out really, really nicely rather than trying to tell him this mountain needs this on, this needs this on. Because as well when we're in Substance Painter we can actually use the actual depth of the map to create uh, snow or grass. All right, so now um, we're moving back into uh, Blender soon. I'm just decimating it down so it actually makes it usable in Blender. Because if not, it would be millions and millions of polygons. Makes it really, really hard to work with. So I'm just gonna bring it in, and as you can see now, it's going really, really nicely. I think actually I do decimate it down a little bit after this, but at the moment you can see we're on 34,000 polygons or something like that, which is quite reasonable. Now, I wanted the actual map to sit on a plinth, so the best way to do that is, again, to use the knife tool to cut around it, and then what you can do is you can actually, you know, make that a really nice kind of sharp plinth for the map to sit on. So, it actually turned out really, really nice when we did this. I did know as well that I think I've got, I got this idea from um, Civilization, the game Civilization, where, you know, all the landmasses are kind of, all the cities are sat on like kind of plimps. I think it was that game. Don't quote me on that because I'm not actually sure, but I think it was. All right, so now we're just making sure that they actually go around them properly. So I'm making sure that they're pulled out evenly, pretty much going all the way around. And then I must have had uh, some brain fog where I just paused now. I'm, I'm not sure where I'm going to go next. So now I'm creating the actual main part. So this here is where the actual ocean is going to go. And then underneath it is going to be kind of a, you know, a rock structure. So it looks as though it's been hewn on rock or something like that. And that gives it a really, really nice shape and, and all that stuff. Now we're going to use actually to make this uh, rock uh, for the map room. And um, we're going to use a pack of brushes, which also comes with this pack. So you can uh, go and grab those, bring them into your own blend files and then use them um, in there. And the reason actually I'm using uh, Blender here is because you can uh, sculpt in Blender or ZBrush, just depending on which one you either find easiest or where you have uh, the best tools to actually use. So, you know, in on this occasion, uh, Blender had this rock pack, which was really, really amazing. So that's why I actually decided to sculpt this part in Blender. Now with the ocean, all I did was I brought in a plane, used the ocean um, modifier, and then just uh, duplicated it basically across, brought it out, and then you can see that we end up with uh, this result. All right, so now we're adding a modifier, we're adding a multi-res modifier. Always do that before you sculpt, and then you've got full control of how it's actually going to look because you can turn up those subdivisions uh, on the fly. Much, much better than using just sub simple subdivision. All right, you can see there that because um, we brought it in and we didn't remesh it, we ended up with topology that was kind of all over the place. So then what I did quickly was remeshed it, then I sub um, used a multi um, resolution division, and then finally I actually came and brought my uh, brush pack, my rock brush pack in, and now you can see I'm going around, pretty much making them bigger, smaller, rotating them around so we get a lot of variation in there. You can see I'm pretty much sticking to like three of the actual brushes in the rock, rock pack, because you can turn them and make them bigger and smaller, you don't actually need a lot of variation. They look so different just actually using those three brushes. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply that. And there we go. That's what we've got. And now I'm going to decimate it down, make it usable. Now, there's a certain point where you want to go with decimate. You don't want to go too far down um, so that you can't see the rock uh, features or anything like that. And to be quite honest with you, if I had more time, I would definitely be um, just using a bake. So I'd be using, um, you know, a high detail bake uh, when we take that through to Substance Paint. So in other words, I'd have a low poly 
and the high poly and I'd be using that to bake it off like so. It would make it just uh, much easier. But doing that takes a little bit of time because you've got to go in and re-topologize and make sure everything's uh, looking good. All right, so now I knew that on the outside of this part, I need, wanted it like a gold, um, you know, kind of um, band going all the way around. And now finally, what I'm going to do is before I bring in my chairs or anything like that, just a quick light check. I always do that. I brought in my HDRI, which probably most of you have got by now. And I'm just checking the lighting on the map, making sure it looks uh, pretty good before actually moving on to the chairs. Now, at this point with the chairs, I had absolutely no references or no idea what I was going to do with these chairs. And at this point, I was kind of winging it. I'll be honest, I was winging it. Um, but then I decided to grab some references and it just helped out a little bit just seeing right okay we can go with this or this so you can see still here at the side I'm thinking right how should I actually make you know the chair ornate because it, it's basically with something with kings generals things like that and I wanted it to be a bit ornate so you can see I tried a few things there even brought in a curve tried to you know turn it around but it just wasn't working and in the end I went with the the simplest way of doing this which was just to duplicate that edge, bring it out like that, bring it up and then rotate it a little bit like so, as you can see, and it actually worked out much, much better. Now in the middle of there, I used again the loop tools. If you've got some, uh, you know, edge loops, you can grab like four of the faces and then right click and you'll have one that says edge loops. If you haven't got it there, it's under the um, Blender inbuilt add-ons. So just give that a test. I use the bridging uh, tool on that just to make uh, well, first of all, I use the circle. So right click, edge loop, circle, right click, edge loops, bridge. Just make sure you grab the front and the back as well at the same time. So pretty much the rest of the chair is uh, pretty standard. And um, just adding edge loops, just uh, pulling it out. Now with that bit there, what I did was I grabbed the edge loops, I pressed control B to bevel them and then extrude them out. And it gave us that kind of ornate part that's actually, you know, coming out from the rest of the chair. I knew that, for instance, I didn't actually have to put the gold leaf or anything like that going down the sides because I know that can be done um, in Substance Painter pretty easily. So I just left that there. All right, so now I brought in four chairs to start with, um, but decided in the end it would be much better actually for the scene when you when you look at it with the camera and everything like that. You can see straight away, like probably too many chairs there. So if we're wanting a frontal view to see the actual, you know, all that work that we put on the map, better off taking their chair away and, and getting you know people's attention onto the actual map which it should be all right so now moving on to the actual pawns so what i did was i checked out one of the game of thrones um, pawns that they had on there i think it's um the lannister uh, castle one i think i'm not actually 100 sure on that but i think it was and i checked it out saw what it looked like it looked really really nice so i decided to actually use that model and to create my own kind of uh, pawn. Also with the first pawn, this gave me kind of the setting for the rest of them. So, you know, I knew how chunky this should be. I knew the kind of uh, stylized look I was going for because, you know, the table, it's quite hard to get a visualization for the rest of it of how stylized it's going to be. So I knew that starting with the castle, the first pawn would actually set a precedent for the rest of the actual builds. So you can see that I'm um, cutting this out with the boolean tool and I had a few problems actually with uh, this because whenever you use the boolean tool it really messes up your topology so you just have to be really careful that you go in and fix those uh, those issues and you'll notice a lot of time when you're doing hard surface modeling with booleans and things like that you really got to pay attention to the topology because it will cause you major problems in the long run um, with even uh, baking with texturing um, things like that so you need to make sure that it's fixed. All right, so now I'm doing is I'm just creating like these uh, little stylized windows. I'm going to actually use the Boolean tool again just to cut them all out. And you can see here, actually, the, this build, it's fairly simple. And it's something that probably most of you could uh, take on at this point. There's nothing which is, you know, really, really difficult about all of this, actually. Now, with the actual um, kind of plinth that these pawns are sat on, um, I just need to get that right because I will be using it for the rest of them. So we've got some helmets and we've got some boats and actually it really helped because I just created the uh, Viking boat so this really helped 
in creating the boats. They were so really simplistic, but I already had a good idea of the shape and things like that. All right, so the first one's in. I'm just going to place them now where I want them to be. I wasn't sure if these would be movable or if these would be like, you know, these are the castles we're going to attack or something like that. So now again, as you know with me, I always bounce around, so I've made one uh, pawn. So let's move to the uh, to the actual stone slabs. So all I've done there is bevel them off, use the randomize, back into ZBrush because I know for certain that I need to, um, you know, uh, make all the edges kind of rough and things like that. When I first brought them in, by the way, I couldn't see uh, both sides. So what I did was I went and turned double on, which you both basically shows both sides of the mesh. And then what I did was I split them via polygon groups. And what that allows me to do then is select individual ones. So I'm pressing Alt, uh, Shift and click anywhere on the screen or the viewport in ZBrush. And that then will bring them all back. And it's alt shift and click on any of them and that then will isolate them out just makes it a really really easy process uh, to actually work on them so you can see here rather tedious job just going down each one or roughing them up just be very careful that you don't make them uh, too soft you do want them a little bit harder edge some places so there are a lot to do and it did take um, a little bit of time probably uh, five or ten minutes something like that um, but once they're done then, I'm going to send them back through then um, to Blender. Make sure they're decimated down again. We don't want them too high poly. Again, with these, you could use the, the high poly, bake it off against the low poly once you've got it, and you probably would end up with a much nicer um, edges and things like that. Now, the other reason I didn't do that as well is um, because if you decimate them down, you keep them like this, you end up with a much kind of softer look to them. So that's something that we're going for as this is quite heavily stylized. The thing is about this uh, build in general is most of the work is actually done with the lighting. So getting the touch storytelling, the atmosphere and the lighting. Now the way I'm selecting all those with this C is just to right click and shade flat. So we get some really nice flat parts onto those actual tiles as you can see now because we don't want them as I say too soft. Moving on then to the ship, just want a basic ship here, just get that shape. Um, you know as close to kind of an admiral ship as you can Add a back in and Then just a mass with a sail and that's it. It was as simple as that very effective though once they're put on a you know an actual plinth It would have been nice actually we did a Viking uh, type uh, you know and then brought in the actual boat we've already created that probably would work really well just means uh, a lot more work for the castles and things like that so they all kind of match up if something's you know uh, very ornate or something then you need to keep going with that style so maybe it was a good idea that we didn't actually do it that way because it would have took a lot longer i think this entire build actually took around about maybe uh, five hours something like that total so quite actually a small build for us. Most of the time uh, was spent um, pretty much building the map and I would say the lighting part of it. Getting the lighting uh, part right, you know, it does take a long time, but it is probably the most important uh, piece of the build or part of the build because of the fact of how much difference it can make. Now for the helmets, I actually took my um, little guy there. I actually went, I grabbed all of these actual uh, faces and then I just shift D'd separating them off from the rest of it and now what I'm going to do is mirror it and I'm going to use that to create these little helmets that I've uh, done. First of all though before we do that just make sure you solidify the helmet you don't want a 2D helmet you actually want it to be in 3D space and um, you don't want to be able to see through it or anything like that and then all I'm doing is I'm selecting a certain amount of uh, polygons pressing X E for extrude extruding it out and there you go you end up with a result like that which looks really really nice. Now I was thinking of uh, carrying on and doing you know some bows and arrows, some catapults and things like that. But in the end, um, you know, I thought it looks good enough as it is. So it was, it's a very good storytelling piece and things. But if you really want to take this further, you could have a lot of the, it could be something like Warhammer with all, you know, with all of those plinths that they have. So again, fixing some topology issues that I've got. I was using the uh, modifier for bevel, wasn't working out. So I went in and just beveled them uh, myself. And being as the camera is not going to be zoomed right up to any of these pieces, honestly, it, the pieces where you're zoomed up to and you see the most, that's where you spend the uh, work on. It's the same in movies, the background, 
if you look at them, they've probably got messed up topology because they're just, you know, they're not actually facing the camera. They're just kind of background images. So, and more lighting tests now, just to make sure I'm getting it right. Before I pass it over to Luke, I always do that just to make sure it's right. Now we did miss out in this one doing the, um, you know, going through marking seams, but I think by now you should all have a good idea from all our previous work of how actually we do that. All right, so now it's on to uh, Luke and I'll see you after the texturing process. Hello and welcome everyone to the texturing part of the video. My name is Luke and today we're going to go over the process on how I texture the entire scene with a table terrain type of a setup. So to start it off, I started by simply checking the mesh and how everything is baked out by baking out a low resolution version of an ambient occlusion just to see if there are any artifacts. And once I found out that there wasn't, I just went ahead and baked everything out in 4K. And during the process, I actually at the very start, I had some bizarre artifacts coming up, but I ended up just saving out the entire project just to make sure that my baked out textures don't get lost. And then I just restarted my program and that seemed to have fixed the issue. Then afterwards, I started off with getting myself the materials for the surroundings, the tiles and the table just so I could better visualize the main piece, the center point for the table, the miniature version of the terrain. So I got myself some nice basic small material for both the tile and the bottom section of the table. And both of them are actually making use out of the default concrete found within Substance Painter just to get myself some basic type of a noise. And then I made use out of a generator mask coming from a curvature as well as ambient occlusion just to get myself some more highlights for that type of material and it turned out quite nicely in regards to that afterwards i went ahead and did a quick material for the side of a border it looked a little bit too bland so in the future i did add up a gold ring going around it but yeah going back to the terrain when i was texturing i realized that some of the edges didn't look quite as nice within substance painter the ones that are smoothed out so i also went back real quick to blender just to make sure that I smoothed out more of the edges by increasing the automatic uh, smooth normal angle. And I also realized during that part that the terrain needs to go down a little bit as well, just to make sure that it touches the platform and it kind of intersects between one another. And that not only helps us to get rid of the gap, the potential gap, but it also helps us to generate better ambient occlusion values for when we're using smart masks or when we're applying them onto our materials. And once I was happy with that, I started my texturing process for the miniature version of the terrain. I went ahead and started with a rocky type of a surface. I had myself a basic starting point with a small material that I already had previously for one of my other projects. I think it was the one that was done for a magical tower within our YouTube content. And it has some really nice basic masks, but of course we had to adjust them so we could get the right type of results. And afterwards, I realized that ambient occlusion that is getting applied onto our terrain is giving us a really nice type of a surface for the grass. So I ended up just switching the color up and getting myself a really nice basic type of a surface for the grassy type of an area. Then once I was happy with that, I started playing around with the miniatures with the ponds within this terrain. At first, I wanted to get a basic type of a look. I didn't want to overcomplicate this entire scene, so I made sure to use a basic type of a metal and make it look like they're actually kind of ponds within the terrain, a bit more of the environment. But one thing I did uh, end up keeping was the pattern for the castle. I got myself a brick generator for it and applied it on top of a castle. Each one of the castles I had ended up using a different mask just to make sure that the bricks end up aligning one to another. And it gives us a nicer type of a flow for the ponds. And once I was happy with that, I ended up continuing on the texturing process for the water, for the ocean bit surrounding the island. And I started off by getting myself a basic type of a water texture that I had. But of course, by default, it wouldn't look quite as nice. So I had to figure out how I'm going to apply uh, things like foam and highlight some of the detail on the shore. So for starters, because this plane actually did have some topology i was able to make use out of the curvature mask in order to kind of highlight the waves and give them some of the foam which ended up uh, looking real nice then as for the side i wanted to make sure that it also looks like there is some motion some movement within the foam 
So I ended up making use out of the warp tool in combination with a thickness map, or I believe that was actually ambient occlusion map in this case, just to kind of highlight the edges. And because there were some pawns like the boat directly on the water, I had to make sure I customly paint them out so we wouldn't have that type of a shore foam around our boat ponds as well. And once I was happy with that, it turned out really nicely actually in regards to the way the ocean waves uh, turned out to be. I also ended up uh, overlaying a simple foam texture for that mask as well, just to kind of break up the surface of the overall foam. But yeah, once I was done with that, I ended up continuing on the texturing process in regards to the chairs. I made use of one of the pack uh, texture maps that we have as free giveaways as it had a really nice type of a wood pattern and I just adjusted a couple of color variations just to make sure it fits more within the theme I made it a little bit darker I also used another so layers the de desaturation to kind of make sure it doesn't have uh, too much of a co color contrast within the environment and once I was happy with that I made use out of anchor points in combination to the curvature uh, generator mask to get myself a bit of an edge wear that would also follow along the pattern of the wood which turned out real nicely the only downside of it was that i was switching up uh, some wood pattern flow and uh, having myself a duplicate out of the entire texture map the base texture map that i had set up previously and then i overlaid it on top of the previous uh wood which turned out all right but when i was using the curvature mask in regards to the anchor points it was using the old material and it was giving me the wrong type of a pattern or the edge wear within those areas but i ended up just painting them out and it looked quite nice in regards to that but yeah going back to the terrain i wanted to make sure i get myself a bit more of a variation within that area i ended up changing up the color for the grass as well as adding some snow now in regards to the snow I made use out of some fractal uh, noise just to get myself a bit of a bump value in regards to the normals and that just gave some extra detail and then I also applied some roughness values that would give a bit of a glitter for when the light source shines on top of that uh, type of a snow and then to finish it off I got myself position mask and just overlaid that for only the top section of the mountains so with that done, I then wanted to get myself uh, some rivers within that area. And I was trying to figure out how to speed up the process so I wouldn't have to do it manually by hand. And I figured that I'd give it a try to the particles, particle masking that is provided within Substance Painter. At first, I tried making use out of some of the more interesting ones like organic spread and whatnot. But then there is a one called Puddle, which basically just gives you a bunch of puddles within your area and ends up uh, starting masking process at the bottom section of your map, which all in all turns out really nicely for the miniature section of rivers. Of course, it didn't look quite as nice by default, so I had to make some custom uh, variations, custom changes to them. So to start off, I got myself some blurred out filter just to kind of ease off on the edges. Then afterwards, I made use out of the warp tool, make it look like some of the stones are showing coming out of the water and it just helped us to break off the entire edges within these areas i did have myself a pawn the soldier standing a bit in the river so i ended up adjusting that as well in regards to how the river is flowing and then all i had to do was just figure out how the rest of the terrain will be laid off so yeah by playing around with this river i was able to get myself a real nice type of a way to break off the entire terrain then once I was done with that, I basically realized that just having metal pieces, metal pawns within this type of terrain wouldn't look quite as nice as the terrain itself is a little bit too complex at the moment. And those simplistic pieces just stand out too much. So what I ended up doing is for the castle, I ended up making it look more concrete. I gave it a bit more of a wooden type of a gate, which ended up looking quite nice. And I also removed the brick uh, areas from the windows as well. Then once I was happy with that, I also ended up changing the base of the ponds, the way the metal looks. I ended up making it look a little bit more of a bronze look, which turned out really nicely for this piece. And then once I was done with that, I ended up changing the way the pond base it looks. I ended up making it look a bit more golden, which helped us to break off the surface, break off the 
overall aesthetics, the visuals of the terrain, as it was more of a color variation within this overall piece. But it's still kept within that design, that aesthetic of the environment. So once I was happy with that, I ended up also switching up a little bit more of the boat materials as well. I ended up making the boats uh, a bit more wooden, but I didn't end up using that same material I had for the chairs. Since it was actually too detailed, it would have looked a little bit more too noisy in regards to that texture. By having just a little bit of that wood grain combined with a simple brownish tint, it helped us to get a really nice type of a wood for those smaller pieces and of course as for the sails of the boats i made use out of a basic fabric from within substance painter and ended up just getting a dirt generator to make sure that the sail is a bit more highlighted in regards to its shape and once i was happy with that i ended up just going around the entire environment the entire scene and trying to figure out how else i can enhance the visuals of the entire environment and i ended up going back to the chairs real quick just to break off some of that material I ended up applying another fill layer to it which also lowered down the normal values of the texture just to again change up the material and make it look the edges to make it look a little bit more smoother basically and with that done i went ahead and added a quick ring to the side of the platform and i wanted to Play around a little bit with how the tiles look as well so i ended up just making some cracks within them using a simple brush alpha and it looked quite nice overall but it just took away attention the focus of the centerpiece so i ended up actually removing most of those tiles most of the damage from those tiles and made use out of it only for one area which all in all i think it turned out quite all right so once I was done with that, I figured that I, I'd play around with the decorations for the chairs as well. I added a bit of a decoration, some ornaments for the side of a chair. And yeah, once I was happy with the entire environment, all I had to do is just export everything out in 4K resolution for the textures. And then we were basically ready to move on to the environment setup within Blender software. So here we are back in Blender. And the first thing I'm gonna do is bring in all of those beautiful textures that have been created. And then what I need to do is set up my lighting. So all the textures are in now. Let's now bring in our first uh, lighting. So I'm going to bring in a sun as I always do and then just change it as we go along. Then what I'm going to do is just change the HDR gradient background just to get something that I think works really well. And now it's time to think about how we're actually going to light this. Now the central point of course is the actual map. So how do we light that? Do we light it with a spotlight, an area light or something like that? Once I've done that or got it something that I'm actually happy with, then I'll bring in the rest of the lighting. Now, the problem here is that I want kind of focus onto the map and the rest of it to be kind of, you know, spooky even, um, kind of in the background. Um, so that's the actual look I'm going for. All right, as well as that as well, I need to brighten up the uh, table a little bit, which, which I did. I brought up the saturation. And now what I'm doing is I'm bringing in some volumetric. So I'm bringing a cube bring in principal volume, and that's gonna add kind of a, a misty type, foggy type glow to it. Now, the thing is once I brought that in, I had an issue with my light, you can see that it's not quite going right because it's probably stuck out the top of the, um, of the cube or something like that. So I just went in, I fixed that. I also made it so it was round that light, not actually a square area light. And now I'm going is I'm just making sure that all of my settings for my um, actual cycles render are correct. Once I've done that then, now I can come in, saturate this island um, out a little bit, and you can see now how much more impact that actually has already. Now, again, with this, it's about just keep pushing, 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 pushing. So volume scatter now, brought a volume scatter in, and then what we can do is we can add some like little um, variations um, within the actual scene. So now you can see we can alter the color, we can alter the uh, depth of it, we can alter the particles in it, and actually the, the one thing we could have done to push this even further is have some floating particles, you know, going past the camera or something like that. But you can see now it's starting to come together, but it does take a lot of work. So now I'm just messing around over and over again, trying to get that volume, um, you know, correct because at the moment it's just way too high and we need to pull those chairs more into the background to make the focal point on the actual map. And there you go. Now you can see every single time I hit that render button, it's getting better, better, better. And we're just trying to push this piece more and more. 
And there you go, you can see now it's really, really starting to come together. We've kind of nailed down the actual, um, you know, the lighting and the volumetrics. And now what I'm going to do is do the little tweaks, like for instance, the gold leaf. It wasn't kind of shining enough. It wasn't as visual as it should be. But now you can see once I've actually, you know, messed around with that a little bit more, and now I can come in and actually do a quick mid render around 300 samples, something like that. Let's see what that looks like. And there we go. Now you can see that's looking really nice. So now we just have a quick look, make sure we're happy with everything. And now it's on to the compositor. We have got a mid render. So first of all, going to bring in an RGB curves, mess around the lighting even more. Next, it's on to the color balance to just, you know, get the right tones and highlights and things like that. And then what I did was I brought in a glare, which basically normally I do for blue, for, you know, candles, things like that. But it really wasn't working, you know. We didn't really need the gleam off the mountains or anything like that. So finally, um, the last one, or one of the last ones I brought in, is a sharpen, just to make sure that everything's sharp enough. And then it's onto you and saturation to bring out all the colors. And finally, brightness and contrast. And now another 300 sample render. Just to make sure I'm happy with all those changes, you have to wait till the render finishes. And there you go, that's the image we've got. And now finally it should be on to the maximum render, which is uh, 5,000 samples. I find if you go over that, by the way, um, you don't really get a lot of benefit from it. Now this actually looked a little bit too dark. So what actually we did was finally we took this into Photoshop and all we did is kind of put a uh, vignette going around the outside. You can see it's quite kind of uh, dark here and you'll see on the next uh, image that is basically what we was left with. So there's our final image, um, you know, brightened up a little bit in Photoshop and that's what we end up with. So really, really nice piece. I was really, really happy with how this came out and honestly it looks at a really, really good level um, for what we we're aiming for. All right, everyone. So I hope you enjoyed that. As I say, if you want to get your hands on this uh, map room, um, the links are down below. And please uh, think about supporting us um, over on Patreon, where you just get so much, um, you know, to actually work with so many courses, so many blend files. It's really, really um, a good offer, and it supports us so much. All right, everyone. So I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.